I'm the best in the world at martial arts right now, in my division. I'm a multiple time world champion. I'm a good guy to call out. If you can beat somebody that's done what I've done, then you're on your way to being a champion. That's guaranteed. Winning is not the most important thing. It's the only thing that matters. So I will fight like a motherfucker for my life. I do everything to have a chance to win a fight. Papaya, and eventually I will do rows and plant again a couple rows of uh, vegetables. I'm proud to be from Ecuador. To me, when you come from a smaller country, you see all those opportunities and you wanna go after them. You wanna like wake up every morning thinking that you gotta get something done just to create a better future for yourself and your loved ones. My dad, you know, he had a farm when I was growing up, so Every day, Monday through Monday, he leave the house in the morning, he come back at night. What I saw from him, it was just a lot of hard work. You know, sometimes looks like, oh, you might never make it, but just fucking keep going. Don't stop, don't complain. What are you gonna give you? Oh, so I go to <laughs> he showed me, have a plan, work hard, and do your best to figure it out. And you will see the fruits later of that labor. I'm really hard on myself because I don't want to let no one around me down. I believe in hard work, and I believe that things come to you when you put all the work into it instead of just wishing it. Legs. There you go. Big legs. Yeah, dude. Nice. When I told people when I was 16 I want to be a UFC fighter, honestly, yeah. no one around me in Ecuador know what the UFC was. It's not like now, like, it's huge and it's in every country and they've been in South America many times. Back then, there was nobody to look up to. Before I make my UFC nope. debut, I was really asking myself, like, how's it gonna happen? I don't have a manager. I don't know nobody outside Ecuador that knows anything about this UFC thing. But I never stop pushing. I just stick to plan A because I'm really good at making one plan. I don't make options. It's either do it or die. Very good. Being the first Ecuadorian signed to the UFC, winning a fight, making it to a main event, it's fucking cool. It's like making history for your country. And I want to bring the bell back to Ecuador one day. It's going to be for the people that believe. It's going to be for the people that have a dream. It's going to be for the people that wake up every morning trying. And I'm going to just let them know. I was able to do it. You will be able to do it. The very first UFC fighter from Ecuador, Marlon Chiso Vera. Now attacking with the arm bar. He's got it. Oh, what a knockout there from Chiso Vera. Beautiful body shot, cripples Perrin. Big shot. Big elbow. Wow. Chiso Vera is creative. He's wild. He's got knockout power.
Feel those feet. Push, push. There we go. Push, push. Nice hook. Push. Nice up shot. Hook, push. Nice. Hook, push. Push. It's Cheeto Showtime. His skill set is is at the top of the game right now. He's beat some big names already. Cheeto's been in there with even tougher competition than the next champion like Dominic Cruz. Push. You know, Cheeto's going out there to hurt this kid. He really is. He wants to hurt Dominic. Push. Cheeto's a finisher. He has that mindset of a champion. He really does. He have a hunger of the champion. He has a discipline of the champion. He's going to climb the top of the mountain. I'm fighting Dominic Cruz, and he's a former champion. He's a tough guy. I just believe that it's my time, and I'm coming to be a world champion. And he's the guy in front of me. Whatever he's doing, whatever he's thinking, I don't give a fuck. And I'm going to be better than I was in my last fight. He's going down. I'm thinking this is going to be the hardest fight of my life. It's going to get ugly. But I'm going to be the one with the arm raised at the end of the fight. My career has just been a crazy journey of ups and downs, really. I don't know if that's too much pressure in the knee. No, it's all right. Just right there is where it's swollen. I feel just really wise from all the tough shit I went through. I call this prehab. It just keeps me from getting injured so I don't have to fix things. I'm fixed before the injury happens. LeBron James spent over a million dollars on PT and body care to get through a season. If he's doing that to play a game, what do we need to fight somebody? Oh, oh shit. On the inside of the calf. Yeah. More calf than Achilles? Calf Achilles area. Okay. This is why I'm still competing, is because I do this twice a week. Step on it. Ah. When you do three ACL surgeries, three blowouts, Every time you blow your knee out, your leg shrinks to nothing. So you gotta rebuild it. And it takes nine months of rebuilding. Nine, 18, you do the math. Ah. Ah. Nothing good comes unless it hurts. Injuries while training is one of the toughest things you can ever deal with. I was so depressed at one point, I just didn't really want to live. I think the biggest thing I learned through the injuries is when in doubt, focus out. Yep, that spot exactly. <sighs> ooh, ooh. Ow, ow, ow. Like when you're really doubting everything on your in your own life, focus on who you can make a difference for, and it'll pull you out of the depths of hell. You know, there has to be something bigger that's driving you than just you. I gotta hurt myself first before I get to hurt other people. It's just pain the piper. When you go through certain things in your life young and you're not safe, then the general trend is that you have to keep everybody else safe. Set it up with a grip. Use the grip. Get them in a bad position. My dad made me the man of the house at five years old. Looked me in the eyes and told me, you're the man of the house. I need you to take care of your brother, take care of your mom. This isn't going to work, and I'm out. Offense, offense, offense. One minute, guys. Got to go. Win, 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 win. He taught me drugs, alcohol can really pull you away from whatever you want. Him being a drug addict, young, not being around, all that. You know, for a long time, I was in a lot of anger and a lot of pain about that. You know, my dad's in the hospital right now, dying. So it just puts things in perspective. Wrestling really gave me a place to belong. 
Anybody better than me became my father figure that I could look up to to learn how to be a man. It ended up pushing me much harder than I would have ever pushed myself. There's a lot of shadow in me and I can tap into that during training when I'm exercising on fight night. I can tap into all that and use it really, really well. Dominic Cruz in the first bantamweight title fight in UFC history. Oh, big oh, uppercut. Oh, beautiful. They both desperately want that UFC belt. The undisputed UFC bantamweight champion of the world. Good to see Dominic Cruz. He's gone through a lot. It's just a series of very unfortunate injuries. Last time we saw him inside the octagon, almost three years. And here he is, making his return finally healthy. Dominic Cruz is back! First fight in 477 days. Tonight, he wants to replace what has been lost over time by beating T.J. Dillashaw. Cruz good with a left hand. hand. Cruz. And Dominic takes it down again. Make it wow. two. Wow. That's big. That's big. Big squall. What a fight. What a moment for Dominic Cruz. The greatest bantamweight that has ever existed. Eight bantamweight belts. Longest winning streak of any UFC champion. Right hand by Cody. Oh, goodness! No one has ever been able to do this to Dominic Cruz. Still relevant in the Bantamweight division, Dominic Cruz believes he still has one run back to UFC gold. Vulnerability is my greatest gift and what I'm probably the worst at using. Because vulnerability doesn't feel safe. It's like state of survival comes more natural. Man at 20, man at 20. Faints. Faints, Dom. Faints before the attack. Yep, feed the jab in the air. It's been a roller coaster for sure. We've been in each other's life now for about 15 years. It was hard for him to get through ACL surgery and his career coming to a standstill. Just the tenacity he showed, the, the drive to keep going, said something about him. Start mixing in the jabs to the high kick. Your combinations are working when he's softball. Being the best in the world and staying there is never good enough. Can never be satisfied. There's just always more. Nice angle, little movement, little movement, good. Now I'm in a division that's it's one of the most competitive divisions in the world. Punch and reset, now move, move, move. Or shoot right away, move. It's more than matchups that excite me, it's more where are they at in the division that challenges me. Uh, body, 1732. And moves me up. Hello. Chito Vera, he's that guy right now, so I gotta beat him. Men at 15. Nice. You know, he switches stance. He's long, he's lanky. <laughs> he's extremely durable, and he comes in good shape. Frame inside, Damon. Frame inside. Make some space. I mean, I just got to show up, take care of the little things, let go of control. <sighs> Surrender to the outcome. Good. Rest. Ah. Rest, rest. Three, two, let's go! Good job, staying in the 11s, 12s. Good job, Cheeto. Cheeto's a scrappy kid. When he came in, he didn't have a real base. He went off on instincts. Looking strong, Cheeto. I could see it in his eyes, how much he wanted to learn and how much he wanted to improve and how much he wanted to be the best. Let's go, get an 11, Cheeto. That's what draws me to a kid like this. You know, this guy wants to fight. You know, he moves his family out from Ecuador. It's a tough thing to do. His tenacity got him here, and he's still plugging away. He's still going. He's still working as hard as he did from day one. 
Shit's no joke, sprinting. Beautiful, bud. The kid's character just showed over the course of time, and you know, it, it, it drew me, you know, closer to him and and gave us a better bond. Boom, just like that. Creating fire. My whole life's about mitts. <laughs> Whether I'm catching punches or flipping steaks, I always got a mitt on. We're gonna keep it a little fucking rare since Cheeto's gonna eat some. We hang out, fuck, almost every day. We cook a lot, we eat a lot, so we're having a good time. I think we're very similar in many ways. It's time to fucking eat. <sighs> He's a great shit talker too, so that's probably a big reason why we click. Oh, look at that guy. Even if there's a friendship, for sure, I treat him like my coach. I respect the fuck out of him. And honestly, before I started working with him, a lot of my fighting was out of my heart than actually knowing how to fight. And now I know how to fight. I wouldn't be in this position without him. Props to him on that. This is a Bantamweight main event of the highest order. First headlining spot for Ecuador's Marlon Chido Vera. He feels like his head coach, Jason Perillo, has given him that extra mental edge and focus to get him to that championship level. My last fight I fought against Rob Fon. It was a really tough fight. Once Font starts landing that jab, I'm telling you, it's a problem. He's a great fighter, box well, punch hard. But I did what I said I was about to do. I kick his ass. Go have a good time out there. Well, let's go in and beat the shit out of him. How many fighters hurt the opponent and then they get discouraged because the opponent keep coming? Well, Rob Font, not so recognizable, but very much in this fight. For me, mentally, I don't have that issue. You know, if you keep coming, you know, there's more time to fuck you up. There you go, Cheeto. There's the guy with the jab. He showed the world, he showed the other people in his weight division that you get into the fourth and fifth round with Cheeto, he's going to be at his best. He's going to be better than he was in the first round. You know, that's a scary guy to deal with. And that is going to do it. One of the best fights of 2022. When you do everything to win, when you put everything aside, life gives you a good victory. When that fight was over, it's not like, you know, you won the fight and you forget about it and you just go get drunk. We don't do that shit. There's a lot of work to be done. I'm always thinking about moving forward. And I really think that's why I got better in fight to fight. I show the world what it can do and people is very excited about what I want to do next. I have another top fight in front of me, and I have another chance to do something just like that. I got a plain canvas that I'm gonna do something beautiful. I wanna put him down. It's gonna be a total destruction. here in my hometown where I was born and where I own a home now and to be hosting you know be the main event is a different experience I don't know what it's gonna bring I remember when I used to have to work three different jobs until five o'clock at night just to get to the gym and get to train and that's all I waited for all day it's hard sometimes and you're tired <sighs> How many things in life are we tired of that we just got to do it? Imagine if we only did things we wanted to do every day, how shit life would be. I'm going to drive by the arena right now and 
It's right here. There she is. Everybody has fight in them. Every single person on this earth has this dark shadow inside them. Not a lot of people get to be with it 100% and then show it live to the world. I think a lot of my confidence comes from that area. Combinations back and forth. For me, martial arts is a lifestyle. I'm not a cage fighter. I'm a martial artist. I use this fighting. Get around that right, long right, long right. And long I right. use pushing myself to exhaustion to learn about myself and see if I'm the man that I think I am. I grew up not in the highest standard of living. One, three, two. When I got thrown out at 18 by my mom because I was being a shithead, I started realizing like I couldn't get food sometimes. Wow, my mom has been living paycheck to paycheck like this her whole life. I've been doing it for two years on my own and this is miserably hard. That lit a fire under me. You start to realize you need all those hard times to get to where you want to be. Instead of I need more, I want more, I can have more. It's like I have enough. I'm grateful for what I have. Use the mat. Use the whole mat. So when you're feeling pressure too crazy, reset completely and then find your angles. Remember those straight leads? Dominic came into the UFC fighting main event fights. Being a champion, holding the belt and not holding the belt. Now it's it's more about what motivates Dominic. Chito Vera motivates Dominic. He presents a lot of challenges. He's, he's tough, he's on a streak. I expect him just to be real angry and want a lot of havoc. He wants to create a lot of turbulence. Yes, go, 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 big sprint, big sprint, put it down. Go. Chito is tough and he's up ranked above them and that's all we ever asked for. He's embracing the fact that he's going in as an underdog. I'm gonna have my gas tank as high as possible to keep a pace. That's what I can control. My dad left me to be the man of the house when I was five. He told me, he's like, I gotta go do my thing. You're the man, take care of your brother, take care of your mom. So I took that very seriously. I didn't know how I was gonna do it, but I believed it. But yeah, first championship, second championship, I just, you know, third. Oh, here's a picture of my dad and my grandfather. Oh, that's a special picture. I don't that, that'll never happen again. I love my dad. He just, it just sucks to watch him suffer because I love him. But he chooses it, so it is what it is. It's not really, it's not even like really a sad thing, except that he keeps choosing it. But I'm like, it's good because at least I have a relationship with him. And uh, all that comes from, you know, family upbringing, right? I think Dominic fights for himself. It's more about his legacy than any belt, you know. And then we've had we've had this conversation of, hey, what's you know what's next? I said, no, I want to I want to keep competing. I'm proving to myself that I belong here, that I am one of the best, and I'm going to prove it again, you know, this very next fight. And that's what fighting is. It's a focus on pushing past the limit every single day until you can become the most elite, clear-minded version of yourself for one night and see what kind of uh, masterpiece can be created. I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life, no question. And it's nice to be able to say that. Winning is not a guarantee. I cannot control that. That's why I show up every day, push hard. I don't talk past anybody. I don't make too many plans. I'm focused on one thing, and that one thing is kicking ass. When you're younger, you're striving to see if you are a champion, and then you become one, and then you defend it. 
I'm a champion, I know that. Can I do it again? No question in my mind at all. Whether I'm respected or not has nothing to do with it. Nobody ever really respects you. They just want to beat you.